Happy Fourth of July. As you know, I like to acknowledge not only religious holidays and seasons in my devotionals, but also civic and national holidays and occasions as well. And there aren't many national holidays bigger than the Fourth of July for us living in the United States. But what does this have to do with faith? Don't we believe in a separation of church and state? Well, in today's devotional, I want to explore very briefly the religious overtones in the document whose signing we celebrate today, the Declaration of Independence, largely written by the man who gave us the unofficial phrase, a wall of separation between church and state, Thomas Jefferson, who was president when he wrote those words. As it so happens, Jefferson brought a certain set of religious convictions to the task of writing the Declaration of Independence, but the content of those convictions may surprise you. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Thursday, July 4th, 2024. As those of you who follow me regularly know, I'm in the process of working our way through the important book by H. Richard Niebuhr, Christ and Culture. So what do Thomas Jefferson and Christ and Culture have to do with each other? Simply this. Niebuhr actually cites Thomas Jefferson as an example of one of his five types, specifically the Christ of culture type. And there are hints of this embedded within the Declaration itself. We all know the opening line of the Declaration, and at some point we probably knew it by heart. It reads, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. The laws of nature and of nature's God. This doesn't mean as much to us as it would have meant to well-educated folk in the late 18th century Europe and America, but it is a loaded phrase. Many of the most well-educated of the time subscribed to a kind of Christianity called deism. This was a set of beliefs which held that the Creator God had done His work at the beginning of time, set the universe in motion, and then was content to let the universe run its course uninterrupted. No interventionist God here. That's what Jefferson meant by nature's God. Notice that Jefferson makes no mention of Jesus Christ anywhere in the Declaration. This is not a Christian document in our current sense of things, but that doesn't mean Jefferson didn't believe in or revere Christ. He did. Only his reference for Jesus Christ was not as a Savior who frees us from sin, and certainly not a Christ who is the Son of God. Like most of culture Christians, Jefferson's Christ was a great moral teacher probably the greatest of all, of all moral teachers throughout human history, like a Plato, only greater, like an Aristotle, only wiser, like a Buddha, only bigger, like a Confucius, only wiser. There's a famous document, at least famous among students of Jefferson, that Jefferson himself produced. You can still purchase a copy of it. It often goes by the title, The Jefferson Bible. Jefferson's title for it is a little different, and the title tells you a lot about Jefferson and his faith. He titled it, The Life and Morals of Jesus of Nazareth. What he did was quite literally cut up a copy of the Gospels with a razor blade and paste the teachings of Jesus into a notebook. What did he include? Jesus' great teachings, the Sermon on the Mount, for example. And what did he leave out? any mention of healings or miracles, let alone the resurrection. This is perhaps the best example of the of culture type as we have. In a letter to his old friend and sometimes nemesis John Adams, Jefferson wrote these words about his little book. In extracting the pure principles which he taught, we should have to strip off the artificial vestments in which they have been muffled by priests there would be found the most sublime and benevolent code of morals which has ever been offered to man. I have performed this operation for my own use by cutting verse by verse out of the printed book and arranging the matter which is evidently his and which is as easily distinguishable as diamonds 
on a dunghill. This, then, is part of what lies beneath and behind the Declaration of Independence. It is the product of Niebuhr's Christ of Culture type, which leans heavily in the direction of the God of nature and regards Jesus not as a divine savior, but as a moral teacher. Is this to call the Declaration of Independence into question? Not in the slightest. It is a brilliant piece of political writing with subtle religious underpinnings. It has absolutely withstood the test of time. Perhaps many of our fellow countrymen could benefit by reading it for themselves today. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.